Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to go over something a little bit different, as always, and we're going to paint white. Uh, white has this reputation as being quite a difficult color to paint, and personally I think a lot of that comes from where you highlight it. You know, if you start from a pure white, then when it comes time to do those details and really make it stand out, you know, do the edge highlights, what do you do? You've used white already. And that's where these two colors really come in handy. I've got here Citadel's Uth How would you say this? Ulthuan Grey or Ulthuan Grey? I've always heard it used Ulthuan, so that's what I'm going to say. And here we have Pallid Witch Flesh. Now there are other varieties of paints like this, but why I'm using these two is these are just off-white, okay? Because when it comes to doing the highlights, I want something that I can do which is brighter than one of these two. Now we're going to paint a Space Marine. So I'm going to use Ulthuan Grey because it's got a very slight bluish tinge to it. And for that clean, crisp sort of sci-fi white, you can't beat starting from this one. If I was going to do something like a knight or a fantasy figure that had a lot of uh, white cloth on him, I'd use Palette Witch Flesh for this step instead. And we'll go through a few other little bits and pieces as we go along. But Ulthuan Grey is what I used. Ulthuan, Ulthuan, Gordon, Bennett. I'm going to keep messing that up. <laughs> the whole way through. Uh, but once I'd given this a spray, I used Corax White from Citadel for the same reason. It is, you might see, very slightly off-white. Given it a once-over of Ulthuan Grey and let that dry. And that's what we've got here. So just to get up nice and close, you can see he looks white. Now he's not. That's the whole point. He's got a little bit to him that we can go up from. And once we get into the next step, you'll see what I mean with that. But that's not hard to do. That's just out of the pot with a little bit of water over the top of that Corax white spray. It's good stuff. What we're going to do to shade him is actually make a mix. I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamian Medium. Now Lamian Medium is pretty cool. What this is, is literally paint medium. This is clear paint. What the medium is, is they'd put something like a pigment or, you know, something in there and it makes paint. So this straight out of the pot is clear paint. You know, it's invisible paint. You could paint an invisible Frodo or something with this. <laughs> but it's going to suit us really well because it's also good for watering down stuff without losing coverage. And that's what we're going to do with this Drakenhof Nightshade. Because this, as you can see, it's blue, but it's very dark. And if I was to go and pop this straight over the top of my miniature here, it would give me a very dark tint. I don't want that. I don't want the miniature to go blue. I want to shade the recesses with a little bit of this blue tint to it. So we're going to make up a mix. Now try and ignore how scabby my little, uh, <laughs> my palette is here, but I'm using this for the welds. Now if you were going to paint a lot of marines this way, it might be worth getting a little pot and actually mixing up some of this, uh, this watch we're going to use. But for this, this works just fine. So first off, I'm going to get one two and let's go for a third big dollop of this stuff i'm making a mess everywhere but i want to have plenty and then make sure my brush is clean because i don't want to contaminate this lamy and medium i'm going to do the same get a big dollop one two three and then mix that around now that's still quite dark as you can see so i'm going to rinse my brush off again and this is how you would just test out how is this going to look? I'm probably using... Alright, we'll see how this looks. This might be a little bit too dark still. But hey, it's all, <laughs> all part of the experience. So with my mixed up wash here, I've got it a little bit thinner than it normally would be. And I'm hoping this will work pretty well. It's going to give me that slight sci-fi blue tinge to the recesses on the model. So let's go ahead. I'm not going to put too much on to begin with. And let's just start going around and getting this into all the recesses of the model. Now you can see already that it's quite different from just putting straight uh, Dragonhoff Nightshade on, and that it doesn't cover with quite the same intensity. And that's why that Lamian Medium is such an important step. So we'll go around now, and I'm going to cover the whole model, because I want all of my white to have this nice shading to it. With the Lamian medium mixed into this material, it'll dry a little bit quicker than a regular wash would. But you still want to give it plenty of time to dry. I've given them a full 40 minutes, and 
there it is. You know, I'm actually quite impressed with that. It turned out a lot better than I was expecting. <laughs> I was quite worried, if I'm honest. Um, you know, full disclosure, I am experimenting on camera here. I'm no idea whether or not this was going to work. So bonus that it did. You know, same as an ordinary wash, just making sure that you're not missing any of the recesses when you go around and jobs are good in. So a brief note on now how to sort of highlight this and get this back up. You can see, if I get in real close here, there are a couple of points where that, uh, that wash, that shading, didn't quite take properly or it's given me these tide marks. So it merits mentioning there are two ways here that we can pick this up and really tidy up. One would be to be the more sort of uh, traditional edge highlighting stuff. Get my Ultho in grey again and go around and just paint over the panels again. So small brush and just gently covering in all of those areas while missing the blue parts where the shading is, you know, more sort of typical. And again, not going straight to a pure white because we're going to save that for our highlight if I was doing the edge highlighting technique. But you guys know me, if you've been around any stretch of time by now, you know what happens next. And that is for me to bust out the dry brush. If there's an easy way or a fast way, that's the way we're going to do it. Now, the same difference between Pallid Witch Flesh and Orthoan Grey exists in these two dry brush paints. Citadel does two, well, almost three, and I'll touch on that, but they do these two white named paints, Praxetti White and Rack White. Now, Rack White has a slight, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera really, but it's got a slight peachiness to it, which makes it a really good one to go over the top of Pallid Witch Flesh, funnily enough. So again, if I was doing that dirty, fantasy sort of medieval white I'd use rack white for this but looking at my clean pristine sci-fi white I'm going to go straight to Praxetti white now Terminata stone is another one that was just similar to these two but it's got a slightly darker grayish tone to it so I, I probably wouldn't use it for this stage but we're going to crack on we're going to dry brush this now with Praxetti white now ordinarily I would dry brush this slightly differently. I'm going to do instead something a little more similar to an overbrush. So instead of trying to pick out the edges, I'm actually going to bring out the, the texture of the, the main plates, if you will. So I'll start with this helmet, and I want to try and catch the bigger, lighter areas. You know, get rid of some of that blue on the flat panels. And highlight up. Now this might take me a couple of passes because rack white, you know, being a white tone, it doesn't cover perfectly, but that's okay because we can go over once, then come back to it and give it another pass, especially anywhere that you've had this pooling, like on a flat panel. We'll give it a quick once over there and then come back and do it again. Now anywhere that this wash has settled right into the recess and given you that nice shading effect. You want to try and avoid with your, your Praxetti white. You don't want to get rid of that. So this is a quick way to get that, uh, that shaded effect onto your white miniatures. So I'm going to go around now. I'm going to do this once. We'll take a quick look at the first layer of white, and then I'll go and I'll finish it off with a second. So there's the first go around with the Praxetti white over the top of what we've just done to prepare that miniature. And as you can see, that's actually not too bad. There are still a few little bits where there's that blue beneath showing through, but for the most part, that's all sort of confined to the recesses and it's given us that nice step up for the white. Now you could quite happily base up the rest of the colors and get them ready to go on the table like that. But let's quickly see how he looks with a second white over the top of that. And this time I'm gonna concentrate more on the highlights that I want to stand out. With that second coat applied, you can see that it's brought out the very edges of that just a little bit more sharp. So along the edge of his uh, shoulder, no, that's not a shoulder, his arm, sorry, his elbow there, across the top of his helmet, you know, we've got that nice depth to the white. And that's really simple to do. As ever with your dry brushing, you want to make sure that you haven't got much on your brush when you're doing it, because you can always add more to what you're doing. But taking off paint means starting over. So, you know, build the color up rather than worrying that you haven't got enough and just putting a whole bunch on at once. That'll let you build up and get this nice transition effect really, really simply. All that is is dry brushing. 
So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm actually going to paint on a couple of other details just really quickly so we can see how that white looks in context. Now I'm about halfway through what I was doing, but this gives me an opportunity here to show you something really fantastic. If you're painting a marine with, you know, white base coat, undercoat, all that carry on, here's a really tricksy way to paint their eyes very, very quickly. I've got here some blood leather. This is a glaze. You could use a, uh, a shade or a wash or what have you. And all I'm going to do is very carefully just blob some of that in like that. And I can start in the center. So if I get a real close one here and it will, it'll sort of flow out to take the shape of the eye socket. Now this is not going to give me quite as precise a look as if I was going to hand paint them in there. You can see it takes all of two seconds and it's tidy. And when he's on the table, which is always my measure of success, hey look, that's a marine with red eyes. <laughs> nice and simple. So there we have it. I've blacked in all of those materials. I've given them a quick wash. You know, you can see that that Noln oil is still uh, drying in a few places. But that's not too bad, you know. If I was going to be a little bit tidier, I'd fix in these these vents, these nozzles or what have you. And he's still going to have his highlight on his black and on his silver. But you can see how quickly that's going to make a big difference. You know, there are chest eagles and what have you. You could spend whatever time you wanted to on making these guys really look to business. But a white model doesn't need to be perfect, you know, especially, look, there we go. He's on the table. He's finished. He's ready. He's done. And that's without spending forever on making sure that everything is perfect. Now, the one thing to bear in mind when you're doing these is that cleaning up, if you make any mistakes on the white, is going to be a challenge. So if this slows down anywhere, it's going to be when it comes to the point you're doing these other details. So shoulder pads, you know, anything that's black in particular, no matter what sort of miniature you're painting, that's going to take you a little bit more time. But much of a much. You know, as far as simply being easy, this is a really easy technique, and I'm quite pleased with that. Like I said, you know, experimenting live on camera, <laughs> and it's come out pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is quickly finish him off, do his highlights, do his base, and get a picture, see how he looks when he's all finished. Now, this is not going to take me very much longer. As you can see, he's almost ready to go on the table. Shout out to anybody out there who happens to be doing white space marines recently. <laughs> so as ever, thank you very much for your time, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.